Welcome back to another TikTok, TikTok or TikTok. Uh, it doesn't matter. Let's catch up, see what's been going on in the last few years, and let's start coding circuits. So let's let's catch up. Let's see what happened in the last few years. Uh, we we've gone through COVID. <laughs> Thankfully, that's uh, that's uh, behind us now. We've gone through chip shortage, which was which was for us going through hell. Uh, it was not easy, uh, not finding parts. Uh, like one of the instances is I reached out to our internal contact at ST complaining that the lead time is six months on some of the micros. And he said, oh, Gus, you're lucky. You must be one of the special customers. You only have to wait six months. That was absolutely crazy. Anyway, I'm happy it's gone. Uh, another one is uh, well, now we are paying tariffs, 25% on on any electronics uh, component, electronic components that come from China, um, which makes it even harder for us to manufacture here in the U.S. Uh, we, it's it's already uh, comp uh, it's very competitive. It's very hard to compete with pricing coming coming for electronics circuits that are coming from China. And now our cost is on any parts we buy from China is twenty five percent higher. Uh, we have tried our best not to. Uh, uh, pass the increase on to our customers. We try to like tweak on our end and see what we can do to keep things uh, more friendly from our end. Hopefully that will, will disappear in the future, maybe. And now let's talk about GHI electronic products. We have uh, last video, last TikTok uh, tech talk I created um, many years ago was about TinyCLR uh, version one and we were testing out what the possibility are into, into moving .NET micro framework into the future uh, commercially. And we have since then released TinyCLR 2.0. It's complete, it has everything you need, it's secure and field updates, every single feature you can think of. We have just recently announced even Ethernet IP as a possibility for industrial uh, customers and automation. Now we are where hardware meets software. And it's an incomplete story if we do not have a nice hardware for you. And Sitcore came about to uh, complete the hardware story for TinyCLR OS for the software. And we've created uh, several uh, fuzz boards, fast and easy board to help you prototype or uh, test out C Sharp on, on hardware and see how things might work. We even have something super, super tiny. And it's, uh, it's one of my favorite things is to when we go to like a show or we talk to a customer and I, I bring out this cool simple simple demo where we have the, this like a finger size board running C sharp controlling some LEDs doing something fun on, on there. Um, it's very surprising to me that in we've been doing this for 20 years and there are still people today that do not realize they can very comfortably run C sharp and debug from Visual Studio on a circuit and use that commercially, which we've been doing that for a long time. Anyway, so of course we have, um, for commercial use, we also have sounds that go right into a product. So we have uh, pluggable option and we have solder, solder on option, uh, high vibration, extreme temperatures, you want something that's soldered on. And while these boards run uh, .NET, C Sharp, Beautifully, it's a scaled down version of .NET and it's limited version of C Sharp because we're running on a microcontroller, which has its advantages because you have full control over the system. But there are instances where you might need the full .NET experience. And we have for that created Endpoint. Endpoint is a board that runs full .NET. It's, um, it's just a .NET. So there's no changes to it. It's the same .NET created by Microsoft and the community that runs on a PC or whatever device. It also runs on this board. And the board has, um, okay, behind the scene, there's a Linux that's running on the board. It's still the board boots in a few seconds, like five seconds to run the board, uh, under 10 seconds to run the full .NET, everything boots into, into an application. Um, this was released as a, an evaluation like for for you for for you to test it out first uh, we have also 
internally uh, created SOMs as well uh, to open the path for eva from evaluation to bring .NET 8 into a commercial product. We haven't announced those yet. We'll be talking about that more, more about that in the near future. Uh, this is like the development board, for example. Uh, and in this case, we decided to uh, make it easier for us and perhaps for you to use a one development board that can uh, work with different songs. So we have a, in this case, like a solder option or a uh, pluggable option. Of course, if you need the solder option, we would be soldering that for you. You wouldn't have to do that. So that is on the .NET C Sharp front. But we've always wanted to also open the door to other languages. Like we've done Java, to, I don't know, 15 years ago. Uh, that's not a, the thing we support today, but we, we, we've done that in the past and then we transitioned into C Sharp. And now we're looking into like other options. How can we bring maybe Python, maybe JavaScript um, or other languages into, into the embedded space? How do we bridge hardware, continue with our story of bridging hardware and software? And for that, we have created Duolink. Uh, Duolink is a it's a it's a it's a it's one thing today, but we're opening that door to many possibilities. So today, Duolink is a little board that connects to a PC or a tablet or 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 a phone, and or any device, a Raspberry Pi, for example, over over USB. And there's a virtual serial port that is that is established over the USB connection. And then we have a scripting language that run inside the board that you can communicate with over the serial port to access all the hardware. So with this board, you can easily uh, build a website. Uh, and then from website, we, of course, we provide all the libraries, right? Like this GHI, so everything has to be easy. We provide all the libraries. So from JavaScript, you pull in a library, and then you have Duolink, GPIO, on, off, read analog, control NeoPixel, uh, read distance, do all kind of things that would not would be possible typically with a PC and JavaScript. Similarly, you can use Python. So you would have a project where you have a camera, you have vision, you do facial recognition, detection, and then from there you want to unlock a door. So now you can do that in Python. And then on the on the electronic side, you don't have to understand much because you have Duolink that uh, connects to a three pin, the servo compatible pin out. We have 10 of these, the three pin connections. There are several sensors like a relay that you can connect to these. We also have a, this little connector that's been used by SparkFun and Adafruit uh, to uh, connect modules. So you can have, you can use that. You can get one of these with their modules and plug it in. And we have micro uh, click modules right here. Uh, if you can see it, yep, right there. Uh, to connect uh, other sensors as well. So the board is made to be solderless, use zero soldering, Java, and a Java, JavaScript, uh, Python, or other developers, C Sharp, of course, of course, that's one of the supported options. So you can use that on a PC and you're, you're not programming the device, you're programming the PC and then you're controlling that device. Now, this is just the step one towards opening that whole new world uh, that we are um, getting into of recreating uh, what used to be Gadgeteer in the past. So you're experimenting with different things. So just to give you an idea, so this is this is just an, a board to experiment with the software. So it doesn't do anything besides just GBIOs. So we have a very tiny micro, the tiny connector we we talked about a second ago, and this is Gadgeteer just for comparison. So the connector it's a lot smaller than the Gadgeteer connector. The cheap the cables are cheaper and easier to deal with. So as far as the cabling, it would be easier. And as far as the software and the way it connects, things will be quite different. We will get into that into the future because this is an example. Um, we created this as a with a partnership with, between us and Aero Electronics and ST to uh, highlight one of ST's motor controllers. And this board basically used Gadgeteer. So what can we do similar to that? Like you prototype, connect something quick and build something, a demo for a customer quickly, uh, proof of concept quickly, and then turn that into a product. Of course, we are, um, we do engineering services and a lot of customers come to us 
and they have an idea and then we create that idea for them. With Gadgeteer, it's easy, but we still use Gadgeteer sometimes today. You plug things in and you, you create something quick that way. Uh, and now we're looking into what other options we may have into the future. I hope you enjoyed this quick update. Uh, I hope I did not throw in a lot of information at you. Um, and I will get into more details into the individual topics. And I would love to get your feedback on, on a few of the things we're working on. Thanks for watching and until next time.